Welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine health research digested for you. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson, and I'm your host for today's episode. Joining me for today's episode is Dr. Emma Helm, a research assistant professor at Virginia Tech University. Dr. Emma, thanks very much for coming on the podcast and joining me to talk about your research here today. Do you want to give a, uh, an introduction uh, to the audience? Sure. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for having me on. I'm excited to talk a little bit about some of the work that I've done. Um, so like Clayton said, my name is Dr. Emma Helm. I uh, currently am serving as a research assistant professor at Virginia Tech. Uh, prior to that, I got my, both my master's and my doctoral degrees from Iowa State University uh, working under Dr. Nicholas Gabler. Uh, we did a lot of work understanding some of the different things that happen to pigs while they are undergoing different disease challenges. Um, and then with the ultimate goal of understanding how we can best feed, how we can best manage, um, and how we can best minimize the impact of pathogen-associated disease on uh, swine, uh, growing pigs in particular. Um, and so that's some of the work that I was, I'm planning to talk about today. Very good. Well, um, I think you've had a good mentor. Dr. Gabler has done an excellent job of understanding kind of disease and physiology and particularly enteric disease, um, and the physiology that, that impacts it. Um, we know that when pigs are diseased, that there is a physical breakdown in that organ or that tissue. And as I understand it, your research has been focused about better understanding what that, that tissue response or the physiological response to the intestine that happens specifically with Lawsonia intracellularis, or the kind of common name for the disease would be ileitis. Talk to us a little bit about um, how you've put together research programs to better understand the physiology of the gut during a Lawsonia challenge. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, ileitis or Lasonia is a really interesting and uh, unique pathogen and, and ty type of physiology, I think, occurs during it uh, because kind of the hallmark of that disease is going to be what most of us would consider that garden hose intestine where the intestine gets really thickened. Uh, it's maybe potentially hemorrhaged, uh, but Essentially, we think that's caused by overproliferation of cells uh, that are normally supposed to be dividing at a certain rate, but then when Lasonia affects them, they start uh, dividing at, at an excessive rate. And so it's a bit unique to some of the other diseases that we may work with, uh, which often aren't going to cause uh, that type of physiology. So our primary goal was kind of understanding, okay, what's the impact of a pathogen like Lasonia intracellularis on uh, intestinal integrity. We use using chambers to look at transepithelial resistance as well as macromolecule permeability of the intestine, um, as well as what's the impact on intestinal function. Um, the thought is Lasonia is going to significantly reduce digestibility and significantly reduce the ability of the intestine to function as an absorptive organ as well as um, a defense organ. However, um, kind of the extent of that mitigation and how uh, different strategies we may use to uh, prevent that uh, Lawsonia associated loss are not quite clear. So our goal was to look at um, pigs that were unchallenged, pigs that were challenged, and then say, can we inhibit some of these problems we see with Lasonia by providing some sort of prevention mechanism? In this case, we utilized a, a vaccine. I think uh, a lot of us as veterinarians and pig producers understand how to, how to measure the outcome of the absorptive part of the intestine, right? We can measure the growth of the pigs, the feed conversion of the pigs. We do that all the time. Talk to us a little bit about how to measure that immunologic function. How do you assess that? What are the assays that you look for? Um, how difficult is it to do? And, and what have you done specifically with Lawsonia to understand that immunologic function of the gut? Absolutely. Uh, there are a number of different ways uh, that you can kind of assess immunology. Again, I'm definitely not an immunologist by any means. And so uh, we try to kind of understand maybe more of the base level uh, applied side of immunology because you can, you can isolate cells and you can look at what cell populations are there and what those cell populations are doing. Um, 
we chose to take a maybe more uh, applied approach and understand, uh, do we have different levels of cytokines, which are going to be the product of some of those uh immune cells that would potentially be at the intestine, and specifically Lysonia, which is an intracellular pathogen, is going to rely a lot on immune cells that produce cytokines. Um, and so we were kind of looking at uh, whether or not we had inflammatory markers present at peak disease, which is going to be day 21. Um, and we did see a, a pretty significant increase in uh, some cytokines, specifically IL-1 beta, um, but we also saw some increases in maybe the anti-inflammatory cytokines as well. IL-10 is a pretty well-known anti-inflammatory cytokine. Um, and obviously, at one point in time, it's challenging to make a big, broad interpretation about what that means for the entire disease uh, physiology. But there is some thought that with Lysonia specifically, it's either able to evade or uh, mitigate uh, the ability of the uh, intestine to a function as an immune organ for, an, for a short period of time, 14 days, 15 days. However, by day 21, what we should see is a significant amount of macrophage inflammation. And with that would come high levels of cytokines like IL-1 beta to the site of infection to clear disease. And so while that's going to cause a lot of problems in the short term, that's how we get that pathogen out of the gut. Um, interestingly, when we vaccinate pigs uh, prior to challenge, um, we vaccinated pigs about six weeks prior to challenge in this particular experiment, that's going to mitigate a lot of the inflammation we see. Um, and we see this with uh, their improved growth performance, with improved feed efficiency as well. Uh, the thought is that with a vaccine, what you're able to do is is potentially get those immune cells going earlier um, and resolve disease earlier. And then by day 21, vaccinated pigs have largely cleared pathogen, whereas at day 21, our unvaccinated pigs are kind of in the real depths of peak disease and are really struggling. Um, we actually, in this study, did daily feed intake as well. And what we see is for the first 14 days or so, vaccinated pigs and positive control or challenged non-vaccinated pigs really mirror feed intake for the first 14 days or so. And then after 14 days, vaccinated pigs really increase feed intake and are back near at the levels of positive controls by day 21, whereas your your challenged pigs that did not receive a vaccine kind of continue to decrease feed intake in until we end the study at day 21. And so understanding, I think, kind of what time points are different, you know, what what's actually happening at an earlier time point uh, to allow these vaccinated pigs to recover early is a really interesting point, I think, for further investigation. Did you find some individual pigs, Emma, in your research where perhaps those pigs did not show significant growth or feed conversion losses, um, but did show some significant uh, inflammatory responses? Does that happen occasionally? On occasion, um, with this study in particular, we I did find that uh, the extent of lesioning did tend to mirror um, a lot of the um, inflammatory markers. In addition, we did some kind of post-study correlation work to understand um, how does growth performance relate to different metrics. And we do see growth performance and feed efficiency to pretty well relate to how big of a lesion that pig has in its intestine. Um, and so in our cases, we did often find that uh, digestibility reductions or inflammatory cytokines. A lot of that does line up pretty well with how lesioned those pigs are. And those pigs are going to be often not performing at the same level as pigs that were lesser afflicted. Very good. That's very interesting. Um, you know, that certainly confirms a lot of times what we see with the in the field. Um, but wonderful that you're taking it to another level and trying to understand the, the physiology of the intestine and, and ultimately look for, for biomarkers, for lack of a better term, um, for some of those uh, uh, enzymes, uh, molecules, et cetera, that we can test for uh, to better understand the overall pathway. I want to I want to thank you, Dr. Helm, for coming on the show, and, and certainly to our audience. Thank you to everyone else. Thanks for listening to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast. If you haven't went on our website yet, please check us out at swinehealthblackbelt.com, and don't forget to subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss out on next week's episode. 
Thank you, Dr. Helm, for, for joining me here today. Uh, and to the audience, we will see you next week. Hey, everyone. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine health-related research trial and would like to come on the show to talk about it with me and share it with our audience, feel free to send an email to healthblackbelt at swineit.com, and we would love to take a look at your research. Mm-hmm.